my lovely friend. Great having you back for another tutorial. Remember last week we did this great little ring? If you missed that, I'll put a link up here so you can watch that one too. But today we are making this great link. Necklaces, bracelets, you could even apply this into rings. You can add a stone, leave it blank. Bear, however you want to say that. Um, I just loved all the subtle loopiness. Uh, you know, a couple little stacked loops, twist and turns. There's no jump rings, and it just all connects. So lovely. Stick a little uh, infinity clasp or toggle on the end of that, and you are ready to go. It's got some length to it, but it's not so long that it's not slinky on your wrist. Um, I tend to gravitate away from links that when they get so long, it's like you have little bricks around your neck or your wrist. So this one still has some length, but it definitely still is slinky. Feels great. You could wear this all day long. So let's get right in how you are going to make this today. I used 16 gauge uh, for this thickness, um, the way this feels and looks really enjoyed it with 16 gauge i imagine 18 uh, would be fine as well this just deserves something a little thicker i think that's just my opinion so 16 gauge and oddly enough if you use exactly three inches three and three eighths inches you have the exact amount to use this with your bail pliers with no leftovers no waste at all with exactly three inches and three three and three eighths inches so um, I really liked how that worked out well um, I had a viewer that loving lovingly <laughs> suggested that I need to let you know the millimeters to these steps I'm always saying the one step or the fourth or whatever um, and they do have millimeters attached to it the first one is two three four, five, seven, and nine millimeters, um, which is good to know if you want to, if you need to know how big does it need to be to put a bead inside. So I use the nine millimeter one and fit a little eight millimeter bead right down there in the middle. So um, there you go. Two, three, four, five, seven, and nine for the bail pliers. And you know, I love these. I use these probably... 95% of the time, I rarely go to a round nose plier. There are needs for that, but I, I just tend to just go to that. It keeps everything consistent. And with this, you're going to want consistency for sure. So let's get into exactly how you're going to be doing this. If you watched my last video, you saw that I had all that black stuff all over my fingers. And I was asking, why do I have all this black stuff all over my fingers? <laughs> well, that's because my fingers were like this. My, I was using my fingers like a polishing rag and a lovely viewer said, yeah, you just got a little tarnish on that. You need to wipe that down. <laughs> but it was with um, the gold filled wire that I have that I just never use because I use, always use copper and sterling silver. Um, so, but it does bright it up. Um, so thank you. All right. We need three and three eighths, I know that seems very specific, but with that measurement of three and three, three inches and three eighths of wire, 16 gauge, you are gonna have no waste at the end. It's gonna ap be absolutely perfect, and I love that. I love not having extra little bits to recycle. So it's a perfect amount. But we're putting a loop right on the end of this wire. We're making this loop right here. And to get a nice snug fit, sometimes, I don't always do this, but you can take that wire and bring it pat past where it meets just to make sure it's it's all the way there. Because sometimes you'll press it and it, boom, it has a natural spring and it wants to spring back. And if you just kind of bring it over, kind of like you're bringing a jump ring together, you won't have that problem. All right, so we made our first loop. We're going to turn our pliers set them back down in there so that now we're going to access the sixth step and make this loop begin just turning and pressing around that bale turn it so you have a little more space oh and we wanted to go on top of the first loop that we made and just keep turning your form turning but don't go past 
right here. Keep it right there. You'll see right now why, why that is. Press this around till it makes a 90 degree angle. And I just use the edge of the pliers kind of as, as a guide so that I get it. All right, now we're gonna make a bend on the end that is going to make a the little connector loop. That's another reason why I love this design because there's no jump rings. Um, the, the design itself has it built into it and I love that. So this loop that we're getting ready to make is gonna be more of a vertical loop. All these were on this horizontal plane and now we're gonna make a vertical loop. But first we gotta make a bend. Get your pliers on there. This is another reason why these needle nose, tweezer nose ones that are good because they just, they're almost the, the diameter of the wire. So they sit around there really nicely. Envision a line going through, kind of get to the middle of it. Hold the rest of your form between your index and pinky. <laughs> okay, let's try to do that. Index and pinky. Do your index and pinky. Your index and thumb. <laughs> And just turn and twist until you have made that line that you saw in your mind. Like that. Turn it over now so that our little stack of loops, the gap here is on top. Back to the bail pliers. We are going to use the second step. I just want to show you how much is left over. You should have exactly one and a half centimeters left over to use that second step on the bale. It's absolutely perfect. Second step, right on the end of the wire. And just roll in, holding this firmly <laughs> between your thumb and your index. Swing it around so that it looks like this. And now we're gonna press against this first bale so that we center that loop. If I can get this back off. Centering it along the whole form here. And it opened up just a little bit as I t twisted it, but you just get your pliers and tuck it back in. And we have made our first link. Little extra bits you could do is put this on your bench block and hammer this down a little flat and make sure it's, everything is perfect. Let's do this again. I had to check my email before I did this again. I just saw an email come in from my daughter's guidance counselor. So I had to, <laughs> Lord, I had to check that first before I could mentally go on. Um, <laughs> let's do this again. Again, um, giving it, look, see, my fingers is doing that. I also have body butter on my fingers, so that might be causing another bit of the problem. I make my own body butter with all natural organic ingredients. It is the best. I'm not like blowing my own horn, but um, the stuff is a miracle worker. Um, but it does turn my hands into a polishing cloth. Remember, we're using this most perfect length of wire three and three eighths inch. What does that turn out to, almost turns out to be eight and a half centimeters if you're going by centimeters. Flush cutting both ends. We don't want to mess with that later on. We want it perfect right now. All right, bail pliers using, I have to, I, I have a little thing. I can't remember. I have to look at it. The third step. <laughs> Come on, ladies, please tell me that I'm not the only one that will look at something and then literally two seconds does not remember what they just looked at. Okay, so the third step, right on the end of the wire, bringing it in so it touches that nice and snug. And remember, see how it kind of like it bounced out again and there's like a tiny, tiny little gap. You can kind of treat it like a jump ring and just bring it in a little bit more. I mean, that is sitting right up against that wire. I can't push it any further. All right, turn your pliers, holding this just like that, just not even moving that. Setting it back down in there, nice and snug. I can't pull this anymore. And now we're gonna move this along the sixth step, which is nine millimeters for that one to know. Hey, I remembered. And just keep turning around until you've got it 
sitting just like this, nice and perpendicular to that. Keep on our excess wire, keep pushing it around until you've made a 90 degree angle. And like I said, I just use the edge of the pliers as a guide. All right, now we are moving into this last phase. Let me show you again. I just want to make sure that's what I have left over. Yep, one and a half centimeters. Turn, let me flatten that, push that down just a little bit. Take some pliers. <clears throat> Envisioning the center line of this whole piece. Put the end of your chain nose pliers, oh, chain nose pliers right there in the middle. Holding firmly. I am, I don't know if you can tell about my hand. I am holding that very firmly so I don't um, bend it, you know, over or not enough or it slips out of my hand or whatever. And until you have created that line that you envisioned previously, turn it over using the second step right on the end of the wire and just roll in. So it snugs right down, right down in that. You see how perfect that is? No waste, what I'm talking about. Turn, just don't take it out. Don't take your pliers out. Just swing it around into this spot right here and then just bend it out. Now, if it created just a small gap or something in here in your, in your loop, just get your chain nose pliers out and pinch it back in again. And when it comes time, well, we'll do this in a minute. I, I want to do another one with you because I want to share with you um, the story of of my middle son. He is he is 20. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's almost 21. He's almost 21. And when he was, mm, I think he was 15 or 16. I honestly don't remember. Um he had what I thought was a cold, a really, really bad cold or flu or something like that because he was throwing up um, and he was super, super tired and he had a sore throat and it was going on over a week and it was really bad. He had no energy and he couldn't do his schoolwork and he was sleeping all day, but he was drinking a lot. He had actually even made this challenge for himself to see if he could drink a gallon of water every day. And I did not pick up on that. I am like, okay, good. Drinking water is good, you know. And I didn't pick up on it. And he was eating well. He had a really good appetite. So I'm like, well, he's eating and he's drinking. So it must be just a really bad cold. But this had gone on for, check which one am I using? The third step. Uh, it had gone on for well over a week, and he still could not do his schoolwork. And my husband said, okay, you need to take him to the doctor. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to take him to the doctor because every time I ever taken my kids to the doctor for something I thought was a cold, turned out to be, oh, it's just the virus. It would never be anything. And I'd have to go through all this rigmarole to take him to the doctor and it would be nothing. And I didn't want to. I actually took my phone and slid it across the countertop in the kitchen because I didn't want to go. And I very lovingly heard the Lord. Now, if you don't know by now, I am a Christian. I heard him say, you need to take him to the doctor. You need to do what your husband said and take him to the doctor. So I made him appointment. Um, they saw him that day and a really wonderful doctor here in Virginia. She's like, okay, this is going on. This is going on. I think I need to test his blood sugar. I'm like, okay, you can test his blood sugar if you want. And the reading was so high that it didn't, it just said high on the blood test. And they did it again just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And it was the same thing. And they immediately called uh, the, it's a, a pediatric hospital that is near me that is wonderful. Immediate, immediately called, they got a room ready, and we immediately went to um, 
uh, intensive care at this children's hospital near us. And he, that's when we found out he had type 1 diabetes. And I'm not kidding you. I know this without a doubt. And this is so scary to me that if I had let it go on, if I had not listened to the Lord, if I had not listened to my husband and taken him to the hospital, he could have very well have been dead that night. That's how bad it was. He had lost 20 pounds. And he, um, I'm not making light of this. I mean, he really looked like a Holocaust survivor. I mean, he was so thin and this is the way I am. I'm not, I don't overreact to a lot of things, but I should have overreacted to that. I, I know, but I know that now. <laughs> My kids are relatively healthy. So that's why it never occurred to me that something was going on. Um, but it, it saved his life. I am so thankful for that hospital, for those wonderful doctors, for the doctor that um, diagnosed him. So if you or anyone you know is all of a sudden drinking a ton of water and they're throwing up with flu symptoms, you need to check their blood sugar because it could be something very simple, sim, um, serious like type 1 diabetes. I am so thankful that he, he's doing well. He's managing it well now. He has a full-time job as a certified welder, so it does not limit him in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to bring awareness to that, that if you or yourself, your family member or anyone you know that is all of a sudden is drinking a lot of water, they're losing weight, they have no energy, that it could be something like type 1 diabetes. So I know this really has nothing to do with jewelry, and if it was too much, you could just fast forward. <laughs> but I wanted to share that with you because it's personal for me, is a large part of my life um, and has been for many years. So let me know if you have any questions about type 1 diabetes. I could uh, do my best to answer that. So as I was talking, you saw that I put those together. I just opened up this vertical loop that we had at the end, just opened it up like a barn door, slid on the next link. And that's, I love how there's no jump rings involved. Absolutely love that. So, and you have a wonderful little space to either leave it open or fill it with beads of your choice. The, these are not real turquoise. Um, Mala, oh Lord, just skipped, just flew out of my brain what it was. They're, they're dyed to look like turquoise. It is a stone, but it's not turquoise. I can't remember. I know one of you wonderful ladies will let me know what it is. So I, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Every Tuesday, I try to have a video. I have, I'm have. i going to try to have great tips for you to um, make your jewelry a success. And maybe you want to make this for gifts. All my pieces that I showed you are easy friendly, user beginner friendly with some basic tools. It shouldn't, it's not going to involve any soldering or fire or anything like that. I, I try to make it easy so that you can accomplish something and make something beautiful and customizable just for you. I so look forward to seeing you. I know I will in the next video.